Oh boy, I'm gonna get some hate for this one. You saw the title of the video, Are Sticky Grenades Overpowered? Well, yeah, they kind of are, but also, no, they really aren't. I know, way to pick a side on this argument, but there's a lot more going on here than just labeling certain grenades OP, calling for a nerf, and then moving on to the next thing that's sticking out. What prompted this video? Well, last weekend in trial, some pretty startling statistics turned up at the end of the weekend. Melee's grenades and supers made up about 36% of all kills in trials. I need to point out that these statistics are from trials, not other PvP playlists. I'll get back to that point a little bit later, but for now, we're just talking about trials specifically. Of that 36%, grenades made up about 15% of overall kills. This is up by about 4% from previous weeks. I need to put a small editor's note in here. There was an image floating around showing 64% of ability kills. These numbers were incorrect and have since been corrected by the Destiny Trials Report team. Math is hard sometimes. Now, why do we see such an uptick, though, this week in particular? The main factor here is the map. Just like how we used to see snipers and shotgun use spike on various maps, we're now going to start seeing abilities spike depending on the map. Anomaly is one of the more difficult maps to play trials on since it has very small corridors that feature a lot of right angles. Engagement times with primaries specifically are tough since there's just so many opportunities to get away from a fight. Previous times that this has been in trials, we saw a lot of special weapon usage. Now that the special ammo economy has effectively been removed, we're seeing a lot more ability usage. Trials has always been a game mode about killing people as quickly as possible. At first, this was kind of a combination of abilities and weapons. Grenades like Firebolt and Arcbolt plagued the first Trials meta, and then they were accompanied by some very good friends like Thorn that could two-tap, and final round snipers that could one-shot. All in all, there was a lot of crazy stuff happening in that first meta. Once those got removed, we found ourselves in a meta dominated mostly by snipers and shotguns. Those two choices still offered up the best strategy for dealing with opponents quickly. After the sniper nerf, we were basically left with shotguns. During this time, we started seeing abilities come back into play, specifically skip grenades and other seeking grenades like Axion Bolt. Sticky grenades also started popping up on the radar much more here. Now that shotguns were both nerfed and then the special ammo economy was basically removed, we were left with weapons that ignored the special ammo changes, so sidearms and icebreaker mostly. Since that didn't leave people with a lot of options, players will default to whatever fit that first criteria of killing someone quickly. Thus, sticky grenades became the new boogeyman in the trials meta, and as a side note, it's kind of funny how we don't want the game to become like Call of Duty with its really fast time to kills, and yet we keep gravitating towards what kills almost instantaneously. The Trials game mode just kind of promotes that in type of engagement so much. Anyway, that's a very long-winded way of saying why Sticky Grenades saw an uptick this weekend. It's a lot of factors like the map, but more importantly, it's because everything else just doesn't work particularly well in the Trials game mode. Which brings me to the original question, are sticky grenades overpowered? Well, if overpowered means that the thing in question is more powerful than everything else, then yeah, sure, sticky grenades are kind of overpowered. Factoring in the 25 second grenade cooldown, which just about everyone runs in Trials and PvP in general, due to the prevalence of 100% rolled armor and how long people have also had to acquire said armor, the numerous ways people can also get two grenade cooldowns, and how literally everything else under the sun has been nerfed from its previous state, then yeah, Sticky grenades are overpowered in this current Trials meta, especially since engagements were once dictated by special weapons. Primary weapons play much different than all the range nerfs done to them over the years. You have to be much closer to ensure a primary weapon will kill in an adequate and consistent, that's the keyword there, consistent time. Sticky grenades exploit that extremely easily now. The other contributing factor to them being so strong is that there simply isn't a counter to them. Remember when the best strategy for killing a shotgunner was a shotgun of your own typically? Well, the same thing's kind of happening now. The best way to combat sticky grenades is to just use stickies yourself. I think the better question to pose now is just how do we fix this? We already saw how we got to this point. 
Every major balance patch addressed the nails that stuck out too far, so to speak. It was extremely rare to find balance patches that also aimed to address what would happen once those nails had been hammered down. The only examples that really come to mind are things like Hawkmoon and Chaperone getting nerfed after their respective weapon types got some sort of buff, or when Blade Dancers had their health regen nerfed in the same patch that special ammo was being removed. The main problem with this type of balancing is that it feels like it's just ignoring a bunch of the other aspects of what the game mode is pulling data from, as well as the other game modes in the game. For example, one of the frustrating things right now in a meta that's supposed to be based around primary kills are res shields. In Trials, you often don't have special ammo to combat that revive shield anymore, whether it be if you died or just never picked it up or just kind of refused to use sidearms or icebreaker. A majority of the time, a res is way more beneficial in swinging the tempo of a fight because you have an extra 100 or so health to play around with. An example of a proper change would have been something like removing revive shields in the trial's game mode specifically for either both people or just the person that's doing the revive because players now don't have the ability to combat that shield with their neutral game options. Previously, you could just use special to kill him. Now, you gotta pelt him down with our kind of low-powered primaries. The interesting thing, in my opinion, is that sticky grenades aren't really a problem in other game modes. Yes, they are still extremely effective in the current overall PvP meta, but they don't have the potency in 6v6 like they do in Trials. Basically, in game modes where you can respawn yourself, stickies are just another death in the grand scheme of things. But in a game mode where every single round has kind of a leeway space in between it, you basically have a sticky grenade for almost every single major engagement that can swing the course of a fight. Thus, why we see so many people complaining about sticky grenades right now. Now, that question earlier, how can they fix this? Well, judging from the changes in the past, the most likely course will be a direct nerf to sticky grenades. The aim assist of them has always been a point of controversy in the community, so that might be one of the avenues that they'll take for a nerf. Another option is something like the nerf that they did to Sunsinger melee abilities a while back, where sticky grenades would have a longer cooldown compared to other grenades. However, while these nerfs would probably discourage the heavy use of sticky grenades, it seems like it's just treating a symptom, rather than the much larger problem, which is the Trials game mode itself. While it's too late in the game life to really do much about it, there's still a chance to leave the game in a much better state. There will be people playing Destiny 1 after Destiny 2 comes out. There's no denying that. So, should they be playing in a sandbox that was balanced around a most likely dead game mode? Chances are Trials won't be a thing after Destiny 1 kind of ends its life cycle, so why should the PvP sandbox be basically balanced around that? For the health of the PvP game, what little of that there is left, there should be at least one more balance patch. Changes need to be made based on PvP as a whole not just trials. Things like addressing special ammo by either returning it on respawn or giving special weapons 50% of a magazine on respawn, that could accommodate this. It would give people way more options for playstyles in the currently extremely limited amount. If special ammo were to return in a significant way, the health regen changes could also be reverted across the board. I know Red Death would definitely appreciate some sort of buff since it's been the whipping post of almost every single nerf ever indirectly. Auto rifles could also use some sort of range extension just so they can further combat pulse rifles and hand cannons. I know I rambled a little bit more than normal in this video, but I think I covered everything possible about sticky grenades. I know there's a lot of other videos out there examining how much aim assists and other stats that these grenades have, but I feel that that really isn't a problem to why they're considered OP. Yes, they've always been strong in that regard, but I feel like a final patch for Destiny should be Bungie turning over a new leaf, so to speak. We've seen what constant nerfs do to the sandbox over time. So could we have the final changes to the game be ones that maybe bring other stuff up? I hope you found this video helpful. I'll keep the ramblings a little bit shorter next time I do something like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.